Four years have passed, and another spring has come to the March home in Concord, Massachusetts. It's 1868, and a part of the family is assembled in the parlor after dinner. Meg and John have been married for three years. Amy has grown into a young lady now. But Beth is still frail and small. Father and Mommy are here to hold the family together. Oh, that's oh, one that's one. Play one, one more. Play, play something else, Beth. Beth. Oh, play. Oh, no, I play so little anymore. I'm ashamed. Oh, please. please. Oh, he coaxes. No, no, no. Tired. Save your strength. I wonder where Joe can be. I do hope she won't be too late. What did Joe go to Boston for? She went up to watch Laurie graduate. Oh, Mr. Lawrence wasn't well enough to make the trip, so he asked Joe to go in his place. Oh, John, I passed your new house today. You should be able to move in in about a month, shouldn't you? We certainly hope so, sir. And high time, too. The twins have had to sleep in the same room with us now for six months. John's beginning to wonder if fatherhood wasn't designed as man's cross. <laughs> I thought your cooking was his cross, Meg. Children should be seen and not heard. I'm not a child anymore. I'm a young lady. And what are you all dressed up for this evening, young lady? Anyone would think this were a state occasion. Maybe it is. Maybe this is a much more important evening than you think. Now, what can that mean? Nothing. What are you talking about, Amy? I won't tell. If you don't know, I won't tell. Now, see here, young lady, there's no way to speak to your mother. If you're keeping a secret from us, we want to hear it. Well, I was over at Aunt March's today. When aren't you? Never mind. She's got a visitor with her, a Mrs. Carroll. Oh, no. Yes, she has. And it seems to me I heard them talking about coming over to call on us tonight. Oh, Amy, why didn't you tell me this before? Who's Mrs. Carroll? She's a very wealthy friend of Aunt March's from Boston. She's going to Europe this summer, and she's looking for a companion. I knew she was going to be in Concord in the next few weeks, but I never dreamed it would be tonight. But, Mommy, what's that got to do with us? It's Joe, dear. She wants a trip to Europe more than anything in the world. But I should have had a chance to warn her. She's apt to come bursting in here and say most anything. Oh, Amy, this is very bad of you. Well, I wasn't sure, Mommy. It was just a sort of a guess. Amy, did you try to get Aunt March to let you go? Did you? No, I, I didn't. I never said a word. But you did put on your best dress, didn't you? Well, it, it was pretty and I liked it. Oh, Amy, I've, I've a mind... There they are now. We really mustn't stay a moment longer, John. No, you're right. Now, let's get over to the church before choir practice ends. Good evening, ma'am. Come right in. Thank you, Hannah. Good evening, Aunt March. You'll have to forgive John and me for running off just as you arrive, but we've got to get back to the twins. Good evening, Meg. This is my niece, Margaret, and her husband, Mr. Burke. How do you, do? How do, you do? do? This is Carol. I think you've met my brother. No, I don't believe we have. Good evening, Reverend. How do you do? I, too, must apologize, Mrs. Carroll. I'm on my way to church. We have two weddings tomorrow. Oh, I'm so disappointed, Reverend. But perhaps you'll get back before we leave. I'll do my best, Mrs. Good. Carroll. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. How do you do, Mrs. Carroll? I'm Mrs. Marsh. How do you do? Won't you come in? Good evening, Good Anne. evening. I would like you to meet my two younger daughters. This is Amy and Beth. How Good do you do? Good evening, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Carroll. And, uh... Where is Josephine? <laughs> she went up to Boston to watch the young Lawrence boy graduate. She'll be back before long. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Carroll? Thank you. Oh, wouldn't you like some coffee, Mrs. Carroll? Oh, please don't bother. Oh, it's no bother at all, ma'am. Nonsense, Beth. You're much too frail. You shouldn't be waiting on people at all. I'm quite well, thank you, Aunt March. Don't tell me. You're definitely pale and much too thin. If you were my child, I'd have you in bed every evening at 8 o'clock. After 8 o'clock now, Aunt March. Perhaps under the circumstances, I'd better ask to be excused. Good evening, Mrs. Carroll. Good evening, child. I'll fetch it. That was very tactless of you, Aunt March. She is frail, but she doesn't like to be reminded of it. Oh, fiddlesticks. The truth is the truth. Well, now let's get to the point. Kitty, as you know, is bound for Europe this summer. You see, Mrs. March, I've always traveled with my husband, but since he died this winter, oh, I find that I'm... Kitty, do let me tell it or we'll be here all night. To come to the point, Kitty has consented to take one of your girls with her. Now the question is, which one? Well, I think there can be very little choice. Now that Meg is married, Joe is the oldest. That's true, but on the other hand, she never struck me as being particularly reliable. Why? You see, Mrs. March, I need someone congenial. This sort of thing never works any other way. Naturally, Mrs. Yeah. Carroll. I hope I wasn't too long, Mrs. Carroll. Not at all, child. It's quite hard, I think. Forgive me, I, I just want to pick up these sketches of mine and I'll leave. Well, please don't go quite yet, child. I'd love to see some of your sketches if you'd let me. Oh, of course. Hello? I'm late. I couldn't help it. That filthy train 
Oh, excuse me. I didn't know we had company. Well, all right. Come in, dear. Hello, Aunt Marge. I haven't seen you in a long time. And from your tone, I gather you'd like to add thank heaven. Oh, you know me better than that, Aunt Marge. If I'd wanted to add thank heaven, I'd have added it. I'm just as tactless as ever. Mrs. Carroll, this is my daughter, Josephine. How do you do? Uh, did I interrupt something? Your sister was just showing me some of her sketches. They show a great deal of talent, I'd say. Joe is the literary member of the family. She writes quite well, really. Oh? Well, what sort of things do you write, dear? Stories. I've had two of them in Spread Eagle lately. Oh. I see. Well, that's a rather second-rate publication, isn't it? It's worse than that. But I'm just starting. That's all they'll buy. Unfortunately, the better publications only accept work from established authors, Mrs. Carroll. Well, Josephine, I hope you're going to be able to help out with the charity bazaar next month. Not if I can find an excuse to get out of it, Aunt March. You should ask Amy. She knows how to get people to buy anything, even those dreadful homemade cakes. Don't you, Amy? I always try. I'm afraid, Aunt March, I'm not very good at doing favors for people. I don't like people doing them for me, either. In the end, they always get smug and full of unction. You'd wish you'd never had anything to do with them. Well, oh dear, you know Beth always likes to say goodnight to you. Don't you think you should go up and do it now? You too, Amy. Oh, of course. Good night, Aunt March. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Carroll. Come along, Amy. It was most agreeable to see you, ma'am. Good night, Aunt March. I'll come over and read for you in the morning, if you like. Thank you, child. Good night. Good night. Good night. What a darling child she is, Mrs. March. I feel certain she and I would get along just beautifully in Europe together. Provided, of course, you and your husband consent to part with her. I see no reason to refuse, Mrs. Carroll. Good. Well, then that's settled, I expect. Yes, I expect it is. Oh, no, Joe, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. I was outrageous. But what does it matter? That Mrs. Carroll's a very silly woman. I couldn't have been polite to her if I tried. Oh, why didn't anyone warn you? She was here looking for a companion to travel all over Europe with her this summer. What? Yes. Why do you suppose Amy was being such a little seraphim? Oh, Beth. A trip to Europe was something I wanted more than anything in the world. Oh, I could cry for you, Joe. I wanted it so to be you. Don't feel sorry for me. If I've missed this, I'm going to find something else. Oh, this place has begun to feel like a prison. But I may not be going to Europe, but I'm going somewhere. I'm not going to be just someone else out of Concord, Massachusetts. I'm going to be Josephine March. Don't go, Joe, not yet. Stay a little while longer. Yeah. Come in, come in. Forgive me, sir. You rang? I did. I'm expecting Miss Josephine March. Show her in the moment she comes. Yes, sir. And are you still expecting Mr. Laurie on the afternoon train? I'm expecting nothing of that young man. When he comes, he'll be... Oh, that must be Miss March now. Show her in right away. Yes, sir. Hello. The door was open, so I just walked in, Stevens. Was that wrong? You're late. That's all that's wrong. Well, you're in a very bad humor. Why? Get out, Stevens, get out. No one asked you to stay. Forgive me, sir. Well, now, where are you going to belabor me about today? Was this I hear about your planning to leave Concord? Where did you hear that? From your sister Beth. She came over to visit me this morning. And don't you deny it. I won't. Huh. Why? I want to write. I don't think I can if I stay here. Neither do I. Where should I go? I'd rather not tell you that. I like having you here. Well, Laurie will be home from now on. You can bark at him. That's no substitute. He hasn't got your mind. Will you stop being grumpy and listen to me for a minute? Mm. Last night I had a chance to go to Europe. And I lost it. Through my own fault, no one else's. But it made me see all of a sudden how much I need to get away. I must. Help me. Tell me where to go. New York. It's the only place if you have the talent and the character to survive. You have both. Thank you. I'd hoped you'd say that. I have no idea how I'm going to manage it yet, but I'll go somehow. I'm sure you will. Well, my dear. Well. Greetings, my boy. Greetings. It's good to have you back. It's good to be back. Joe, hello. Hello, Laurie. Well... 
Under normal conditions, I'd remain to greet you more fully, but... You're not leaving just as I arrive. Miss March will act as my substitute. I must get upstairs and get some rest. I'll see you at dinner at 7 o'clock sharp. Now, don't you be late. I expect if anyone's late, it'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been quarreling? Yes, a little. He's getting very old, Laurie. I know. What were you talking about? Me. He convinced me I had to get away. I'm going to New York. New York? When? I don't know that yet. Soon, I hope. This isn't quite the news I was ex expecting. I planned for over a year to come back here. It's no use pretending, Joe. I've been in love with you for a long time. Oh, no, Laurie. We were best friends, don't you remember? It's been more than that for over a year now. Yet every time I've tried to tell you, you've stopped me. I wanted to save you this. I tried for a long time to make myself love you the way you wanted me to. And it just never happened. And there aren't any solutions to not falling in love. I see. But I never wanted to hurt you, Laurie, never. Well, it's my fault. It's just that for years I've gone on thinking that when the time came, we'd be married. I expected foolishly enough to come back here and find you ready. You're not. I'm sorry, but don't you see, Laurie? If we were married, we'd quarrel and nag each other, and in the end, it would be ugly and wrong. This way, we can go on. Forgive me, but your sister is here, Miss March. She'd like to speak to you. Oh, we'll send her in. Hello, Laurie. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Beth asked me to come over to find Joe. Is anything the matter, Amy? Oh, nothing important. She just wanted to see you. Well, I'll run over and see what it is. Forgive me, Laurie. We'll talk again tomorrow. My, you've changed so, Laurie. Have I? Oh, yes. I've changed, too. You're quite a young lady now. Oh, thank you. I expect everybody's been spoiling you to death, telling you how pretty you are. Oh, no. Do you really think I am? You know quite well you are. I'd like to hear you say so just the same. I'll do nothing of the sort. I won't be responsible for your turning your head completely. No one can be a real lady in this little town. That's why I'm going abroad this summer. When I come back in the fall, you won't treat me like a little girl anymore. Well, you'll upset the whole continent, I should think. I'll do my best. <laughs> Why don't you come to Europe, too? It's a wonderful way to finish your education. I thought it was finished already. Perhaps I was wrong. Well, I'd better get back. It was nice to see you again, Laurie. I hope I see you again soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. What is it, Beth? Just that same old pain. I think so. I didn't want Marmy to know. That's why I asked Amy to call you. Of course. Was it the wrong moment? Oh, no, it was very right. I just finished telling Laurie I wasn't in love with him. Oh, Joe, you didn't. Oh, he loves you so much. Are you sure you were right? Yes, darling. Quite sure. I wish I could help him. He'll be lonely now. Sometimes you need someone to stop you from crying out loud. He'll survive, I think. In fact, I'm making it easier for him. I'm going away. Away? Where? New York. I... Come in. Hello, girls. Shouldn't you two be down helping with the supper? I'll go right away. Beth's got a little headache. Oh, well, then you stay right here, Beth. Joe's going away. Did you know that, Father? Oh, I hadn't heard. Where, Joe? I want to go to New York, Father. I haven't the money, though. Well, does it mean so much to you, Joe? Yes. At the moment, everything. I suppose that's selfish of me. Perhaps. There are times when a person has to be selfish, Joe. Now, if you want to go that much, we'll find a way. Oh, Father, truly. Well, what else are fathers good for? Oh, I love you very much. <laughs> I love everyone in the whole world at this moment. Even Aunt March. <laughs> you need some help, Hannah? No, but Joe will before she goes to New York. That old box has fallen to pieces. Oh, goodness, it is terribly battered, isn't it? I think Amy took all the best luggage to Europe with her. Where's Joe's blue sky? It's in the kitchen. I was ironing it. She'll never get on the train with everything. I'll help you, Mommy. Mommy, do you think Joe's running away from something? What do you mean, dear? Mommy. 
Perhaps. Why? They're so ideally suited. It's absolutely foolish of her not to marry him. Joe isn't like you, Meg. You wanted marriage. She doesn't. Mommy, what else is there for a woman? Well, Joe wants so many things. I'm afraid she's going to be very badly hurt before she gets them, but in the end... What? She may find something all the rest of us have missed. Is everybody ready? I'll get your scarf. Can I go? What did I do with your money? Wait a minute. I think I put it up. The carriage is outside. Oh, goodness. I'd better go see if I can't hurry things in the kitchen. Did you come to say goodbye? If so, I'm glad. I came to take you to the station. These your things? Yes. We'll probably both be very lonely for a while. Probably. I think it would be better if I didn't stay here in Concord. Where are you going? Europe, possibly. I don't really know. Europe? Well, perhaps Amy will be able to cheer you. I don't expect to change my mind that quickly. Will you think about it, too, while you're away? Yes, I'll think about it. Will you write me once in a while? No, Laurie. I'll write you if I change my mind. Joe! Joe, come go. Oh, I hope we got it. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, honey. Oh, we hope you're going to go. Miss Joe, here's your scarf. Take care of yourself, dear. You better let me go before I bust out the door. Goodbye, Joe, dear. Oh, dear. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. 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 Small room, Miss March. Oh, it'll do quite well, Mrs. Kirby. You should be quite private here from the boarding guests. But of course, you take your meals downstairs with us. Thank you. Well, you will no doubt want to unpack, Miss March. Our supper is at six sharp. I'll try not to be late. <laughs> that is most annoying, I'm sure. Oh, no, I like it. Whoever it is has a lovely voice. Nonetheless, Professor Bayer should realize there are others living here besides himself. It's very thoughtless of him. I think you'll not be disturbed again. Forgive me. I did not know there was anyone in this room. Well, I'm sorry. I just arrived. And my music disturbed you so soon. No, I quite liked it. It was Mrs. Kirk who knocked. <laughs> ah, she has. She has no feeling for music. Uh, since we are to be such intimate neighbors, perhaps I should introduce myself. I am Professor Bear. How do you do? I'm Miss March. How do you do? You do not entirely mind my music, then? No. Good. If you do, I give you permission to tap on the door. I will always stop. Thank you. I hope I shall never find it necessary. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, as a new arrival, you should have some welcome. Won't you come in, Miss Mark? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, is that a bust of Goethe you have? Yeah. So you have read Goethe? Oh, well, only a very little. <laughs> I find even a little reading is very rare in this house. Mrs. Kirk will soon disapprove of you, as she does of me. You have a great many books here, I see. <laughs> you accept the invitation of a book, and yet you refuse me. Oh, forgive me. Oh, not at all. I'm glad something has made you cross this threshold. <laughs> oh, please. I won't hurt you. This is perhaps your first trip away from home, yeah? Yes, I come from New England. Ah, yeah. That is why you were so cautious. Well, let me tell you something about myself so you will feel more at ease. I am Fritz Beer. I come from Wiesbaden in Germany. I teach German and music. There. You will take coffee with me. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I think you will. You like the music, Miss March? Very much. Beethoven? 
Well, I know so little about him. My sister plays a little. She hasn't got to Beethoven yet. Oh, you have a sister then? I have three. One's married and one's in Europe traveling. So, drink your coffee. Oh, thank you. Any book you like, you may have. Oh, uh, thank you, but I couldn't. Oh, why not? Well, I've only just met you. This thing is not good in New England. Oh, no, not anywhere, on such short notice. You make very good coffee. <laughs> Anytime you come, I make coffee and we play Beethoven, yeah? Thank you. You see, this is my garden. <laughs> oh, that's a very good idea. I must get myself some flowers. I'm used to a big garden at home. I shall miss it. New York seems to be all fire escapes and brick walls. <laughs> we have to learn to look above them. Now look. Just a brick wall, you see. But now, come. Bend down. Now, look up. You see? Over the chimney pots of the stars. <laughs> they are always there if we look for them. <laughs> now you smile. I thought then this was not permitted in New England. <laughs> thank you so much for the coffee. Well, you then will not stay? Oh, thank you, but supper's at six sharp. I have to unpack. Another time. Another time. Come again, please. Thank you. Trade makers were at work all along the road, and the sky, though far from cloudless, was such as promised well for the future. Ah. <laughs> Here, give me that. <laughs> You've been trying to thread that needle for the past ten minutes. Oh, I was listening. <laughs> you read very well, Miss March. You also sew on buttons well. Two great accomplishments. Now, if I could write well too, I'd be quite happy. You shouldn't smile. I'm more discouraged than you know. You must not be impatient. Keep on writing. Well, I shall, but I, I can't help feeling a bit depressed. You have set a standard for yourself, and you are trying to live up to it. That is very necessary. I know. And sometimes I sit and write till the small hours with my head reeling. And then in the cold light of morning, all the ideas, all the characters seem commonplace. I try not to think about it, but perhaps my writing isn't any better than the things I used to write. Of course you are. Even geniuses have their moments of panic and despair. When people say they wish they could write, they know nothing about it. They do not know the drudgery. <laughs> And the heartache and the loneliness that goes into it. Perhaps they're lucky. And yet, you will write a book someday, a good book. I feel it. <laughs> You're very good for me on a dull rainy day. Thank you. Perhaps something will have to happen to you first. I don't know. But it will come right in the end. Here you are. <laughs> Thank you. I do not know how I have lived before you came. <laughs> <laughs> but now... Now I have to do my examination papers, so if you will excuse me. You shouldn't be doing this kind of work. It's all wrong. Oh, dreadful things we do for a little money. Even you. If I knew a little more German, I'd offer to help you. But I can't. <laughs> Forgive me. I'll go around and do letters. Yeah, and then later perhaps we hear Mozart and forget about the drudgery for a bit, eh? That would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for the coffee. Thank you for sewing on the buttons. You not only do good for me, you do me good. You make me feel young. <laughs> uh, younger, at least. And it is not often these days we can feel younger. You shouldn't apologize for your age. Uh, that's what's made being with you possible. It's easier to respect and trust someone older. Without that, there would be nothing at all. Then, I am something more to you than nothing at all. I wish you hadn't said that. Why? It makes me angry. I'm acting just like Meg. Oh? And how does Meg act? She blushes. Oh, 
Oh, excuse me. I should have closed the door. I will close it. He teaches German and is really a cultured, charming gentleman. I see a great deal of him, but since he's nearly 40, it uh, causes no comment even among the other boarders. I am still a little discouraged about my work. Tomorrow I have to see an editor about one of my stories, but I know he will ask for changes, and if he does, I will make them. I should have strength enough to refuse, but I'm not as proud as I once was. Poor Joe. Oh, yes, she's found very little of what she hoped for, I'm afraid. Except Professor Baer. He sounds like a friend in need. Perhaps. I wish she would come home. The house seems so empty without her. We don't even have to go around picking up things anymore. It's almost as lonely as old Mr. Lawrence's place, and he has nothing left but me to talk to. The big house is unhealthy. It's full of quiet and shadows. Do you suppose people know when they're going to die? Well, Beth, uh, what makes you ask that, dear? I think Grandpa Lawrence knows. And I think it's better that way. Once you've faced it, there's a kind of stillness and quiet that comes to you. That must be Aunt March. Yes. She asked if she could come by. I'll get it, Hannah. Hello, Aunt March. Come Good in. evening. I was just going to ask Hannah to put on some hot coffee. Oh, not for me, thank you. I haven't been able to sleep lately for the first time in my life. Good evening, Thomas. Good evening, my dear. I'm so glad you could drop in. Beth, John, how are you? Fine, thank you, Aunt. Still not putting on much weight, I see. Oh, I'll never be plump, Aunt March. Do sit down. What's the news from Josephine? Oh, we got a letter from her today. She's doing quite well, really. A little discouraged about her future, I think, but that will pass. I think she ought to come home. How do you feel about it, Beth? Oh, no. Oh, I'd like to have her back, naturally, but I don't think she ought to come a minute before she wants it herself. Well, she has spirit, I must admit, and I admire that in her. But heaven knows, I hope she never finds out I said so. <laughs> Why, Aunt March, are you actually softening toward Joe? No. If she were here, we'd start fighting all over again. But I miss her. Nobody comes clumping through the house, slamming doors, upsetting chairs, doing everything she's been told not to do. <laughs> well... Maybe I am softening a little. <laughs> I'm getting old. That's it, I guess. But for all the spats we've had, I'd love to see her. I'd love to hear her laugh. <laughs> Why, Aunt March, you're smiling. Oh, fiddlesticks, I haven't gone to pieces that much. <laughs> Did you have a good walk? Well, you do look ferocious. What is it? Do I have a smudge on my nose? I am very angry. I thought more highly of your intelligence than, than this. Oh, let me see it. You should not see it. No one should see it. You don't like it. Is it as bad as that? This is not the story you wrote. You have changed it. You have made it cheap without meaning. No one would have touched it unless I'd agreed to make those changes. That's what people want. People want to get drunk on bad whiskey. You do not have to sell it to them. People want to beat up their children. You do not have to shout. Me too. I expect better of you than that. Well, I'll have to eat. Why? It is better you should not eat. What do you expect me to do? Oh, there are other ways to make money than this. This is what you believe. This is you. You cannot degrade it without you degrade yourself inside. This is trash. I am ashamed for you to see it. It is trash. Oh, I'm right back where I started from. I've come all this way to end up nowhere at all. You are just beginning to write from the heart. You are just beginning to grow. Like a song you hear in your head for the first time. Far off. But yet you know it will come to life. It will be heard. Oh, I want it to be like that. I do, I do. If you begin by writing trash, you end by writing it. You will make money. Yes, you will make success. But, oh, Liebchen, Liebchen, you will also change. And there will be no light in your eyes. 
and you will be old. Very young, you will be old. Stop now. I have not been very kind, forgive me. You had no right to be kind. I shouldn't want to be treated like a child. You were a child when you came. In so short a time you changed. You are become a woman. But this is not the end. You have many years before you. This is only the beginning. No, I suppose it's not the end of everything. <laughs> you can smile again. This is good. Yes. For even the way things are, even as discouraged as you've made me feel, even though I know you're here again and again to hurt me and hurt me, still I'm glad I'm here and not somewhere else. Oh, where is somewhere else? Oh, that's another disappointment I had. I nearly went to Europe this summer. Alone? No, as companion to a very rich lady. And this is my balcony on the Arno, with the warm Italian sun pouring over us. Us? I would not be there. I would be here. Oh, no. If I were there, you'd be Laurie. And... Oh, this is getting very complicated. He's the boy from Harvard. Yes. We're best friends. He's sweet. I miss him a great deal. He will be back soon. I don't expect so. He's having much too good a time, I imagine. Dear Laurie. It's a very beautiful view, Signorina. Yes. In a minute, the sun will go down. It's been a beautiful day all day. Oh, grazie, Signor. You may keep it to remember Italy by. It's been very good to me. Oh, Laurie, I'm so glad we didn't go with the others. I've had such fun today. So have I. It's like a fairy tale. I wish it could go on forever. You can't, though, I'm afraid. I know. Grandpa hasn't been very well. I, I may have to go back very soon. What will you do then? Live as indolent a life as I can. <laughs> Don't be flippant. <laughs> I mean it. I intend to become an ornament to society. Joe would never approve of that. No, I don't suppose she would. Hasn't she written to you? No. Have you written to her? Every week up till now. Why did you stop? Well, I, I guess there just isn't any use anymore. Then if it's no use... What? You shouldn't let it hurt you anymore. You shouldn't grow bitter and try to get even. You'll only hurt yourself. In what way? You aren't really lazy. And you really do care about things. You've much more ambition than you'll admit. You have a wonderful mind. And you're quite handsome when you smile. It's silly to throw all that away just because you can't have what you want. You're a good observer, Signorina. If you mean you're surprised that I have a thought in my head other than clothes and dancing partners, it's time you found out otherwise. Amy. The sun's almost down. Shouldn't we go inside? Are you trying to stop me from what I was going to say? No. You can say anything you want, Laurie. Amy. She's just gone off to sleep, sir. Thank you, dear. Thank you. That must be John and Meg now, dear. Mommy. We got your message. Oh. We came just as fast as we could. Is anything wrong? Is Beth worse? Yes. Yes, she is. It's no use pretending any longer. Beth will never get up again, dear. Oh, no. The doctor says it may be a few months, perhaps less, but we must face the facts. Oh, Mommy, does she know? I don't think so, Meg. We've tried to keep it from her. We asked you to come over because we want to discuss something with you. Your mother and I feel that under the circumstances, Joe should come home. Of course she should come home. She'd want to come home. I suppose so, Meg. But Joe's just beginning to do some good work. It isn't easy to ask her to come back here when none of us knows just how long. Oh, she'd never forgive us. Joe's been closer to Beth than any of us. I think we should send for her tonight. We must all do everything in our power to make Beth's last days. <coughs> Happiest to be imagined. Well, that's everything, I guess. We'll miss you, Joe. I do hope your sister will be better soon. Thank you, Mrs. Kirk. I have the boy come up and take your box downstairs. 
You'll just have time to make that train. Oh, Professor, Miss March was just waiting to say goodbye to you. Now don't keep her. She hasn't much time. This is our video saying then. Yes, I expect it is. You will come back. Uh, perhaps, I don't know. Well, what about your work? You were doing well. I was proud of you. I owe you so much. Without you here, all this would have been wasted and meaningless. No matter what happens now, it won't be there. <laughs> Nothing is ever entirely wasted. You have made at least one new friend, yeah? Yes, one very good friend. I shall miss you very much. I too will miss you. I have brought you something. You admired it once. Oh, how like you to have remembered. Would have written in it too. Wait for me, my friend. I may be a little late, but I will surely come. What does that mean? It means do not lose hope. Happiness will come if you wait. Thank you. Oh, look. There's another button off your coat. <laughs> you do need someone to look after you. I will manage somehow. I managed before. Goodbye, dear friend. You're much too tired to wait up any longer. Why don't you settle down now? You can see Joe tomorrow. No, Mommy. They'll be here any minute, I know. The train may be late, dear. We'll have plenty of time to talk to Joe in the morning. I'm probably silly, but... Mommy, would you take the clock away? It ticks so loudly I can't hear anything else. Oh, there they are. Oh, Rosie. Oh, oh, Mommy, it's so good to be home. Oh, it's so good to... Oh, Joe, I've waited so long. How good. I'll fix you something hot to drink, Joe. Call you when it's ready. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Joe, how fine you look. It was good of you to come. I'm so happy I could burst. I wasn't doing well in New York, really. I wasn't getting anywhere. And when I finally got the idea of coming home early for Christmas, there wasn't anything I could do. Oh, what fun we're going to have. Still almost two months till Christmas. Yes. And by that time, we're going to have you rosy and plump to welcome Amy home. Perhaps. Will Laurie be coming home, too? Oh, I imagine so. I haven't heard from Laurie in a long time. Joe, don't forget about Laurie. He's lonely and restless. He needs someone. I'd like to know he was happy. Does it mean that much to you, what happens to him? It always has. I never knew. I never even guessed. If you can't love him the way he loves you, at least try. Mm -hmm. For my sake. Oh, Beth, you, you make it sound so final. That's what it is, Joe. No, it isn't. We're going to get you well. No, Joe. Not this time. You know, I think I knew, oh, a long time ago. It's funny, but I never did make plans like the rest of you. I never saw myself getting married or going to Europe or writing books like you. I just never planned anything. I can't let you go, Beth. I can't. Don't, Joe, please. I don't want to remember tears. We've lots of days ahead of us, and I want them to be just as they were. Yes, darling. Hold my hand. Joe, dear, you must get some sleep. This is no good sitting up night after night. It's past midnight. I've grown used to it. I did it so much with Beth. 
You look worn out, dear. Can't you leave what you're writing? Is it so important? Yes, very. It's a few words about Beth. It's a poem. May I read it? Oh, not yet. I don't want anyone to read it just yet. Later I will. If it still means what I meant it to say, I'm going to send it to a New York paper. I wish Beth could know it would make her so happy. You must get some rest now, dear. In a moment, I have one short letter to write. I promised Beth I would. All right, darling. Good night. Good night, Mommy. Dear Laurie, no Wait for me, my friend. I may be a little late, but I will surely come. Surprise. Your mother wasn't expecting you till tomorrow. Is Mother home? Yes, she's upstairs. Oh, what a pleasant uh, surprise, John, dear. Uh, when did you get back? Today. We'd seen all we wanted to of Boston. Anyway, we were homesick for the twins. How have you been? Keeping busy and occupied, getting ready for Christmas. We felt it was the only thing to do. How's Joe, Mommy? She seemed so lost and lonely when we went away. I didn't know how to answer that, Meg. Joe isn't easy to get close to. Just don't know. Is she going back to New York? No. I had expected her to, but she doesn't seem to be able to make plans of any kind. She isn't even writing. That doesn't sound like Joe at all. Every day this week she's been over talking to Aunt March. All of a sudden they're inseparable. Joe and Aunt March. I know it sounds impossible. But ever since Beth passed away, Joe seems to be waiting for something. Laurie? I don't know. Joe's never been one to talk much about the things that were closest to her. Joe! Oh. Meg, oh, how wonderful! When did you get Just back? today, how are you? I'm full of plans. I've been without March. I have the most wonderful news. What? Well, there's been an idea brewing in the back of my mind for weeks. I wanted to start a school. A school? Oh, no, why haven't you told me this before? Well, I just never knew how to start. Every place I looked was too expensive. And then, out of the blue almost, Aunt March offered me her big house. She's lost in it, she says. She's going to move into the cottage. Isn't it exciting? It certainly is. You should do a wonderful job, Joe. But, Joe, how can you? You haven't the money. I can raise a mortgage, and Aunt March has promised to help. I've been with her and the architect all afternoon. Oh, Joe, this is most exciting. But what of Laurie? Is this the sort of life he's going to want? Oh, Laurie's always wanted the things I wanted. He won't turn me down. You're sure you won't be turning him down? Oh, no, Mother. I couldn't. Even if I wanted to. I made a promise. Now I've got to take these plans upstairs before I lose them. And they cost money, too. Aunt March's money. <laughs> it's good to see her like that again. The most exciting thing about that was what she said about Laurie. I was afraid she'd lost interest in him. Hello, dear. Oh, Papa! <laughs> Hello. Oh, Meg, John. Did you have a good time in Boston? Wonderful, thank you, sir. Just as I got here, a boy rode up and handed me this. It's a cable from Amy. Oh, Papa, read it. Is she coming home? They're coming home. They? They. Amy and Laurie were married in London two days ago. Married? Ah, Mrs. Kirk, come in. Miss Abea, you sent us no word. I was not expecting you. <laughs> Three months is long enough. I've come home. A few days after you left, I cut something out of the paper for you. I put it here. It's been waiting for you. Oh. Was someone advertising for a German teacher? No. It's something by Miss March. It's a poem. Oh. I had no idea that she could write so well. But of course, I'm no real judge. Would you like me to bring you some coffee? If you would wish. Uh. Oh, 
Henceforth, safe across the river, I shall see forevermore a beloved household spirit waiting for me on the shore. Hope and faith, born of my sorrow, guardian angel shall become, and the sister gone before me, by their hand shall lead me home. Shall lead me home. And so that's how it all happened. Mrs. Carroll was matron of honor and her niece attended me. I wore my pale blue chiffon. Oh, Amy, I do wish you'd wait until you got home. John and I would love to have given you your wedding, wouldn't we, John? We certainly would. Well, we thought about it, but both Laurie and I thought it was better this way. We thought that a wedding here at that time would be difficult for everyone. Yes, I think it would have been, Laurie. Never mind. Next time you get married, you can do it right here. Dinner's <laughs> nearly ready, ma'am. Would you like to come in and arrange the presents? Oh, Hannah, we're going to put them under the tree. Oh, never mind. This is going to be a wonderful Christmas Eve party with Amy and Laurie home. <laughs> come along. Come on, Meg. Come here. You two look so happy. I could kiss you both. Oh, Joe, you've been so sweet. Well, I must go and tidy up. Laurie? Hmm. In a minute. You really are very happy, aren't you, Laura? Yes, very happy. There's only one thing that would make me unhappy. We weren't always best friends. We always will be. Now run along. Supper's almost ready. Is it really you? You told me once if I was ever in the neighborhood, I should pay a visit. <laughs> well, I'm here. Oh, welcome. I, I don't know whether to laugh at it. Oh, are those for me? Yeah, I uh, had some business in Concord. Oh, business on Christmas Day? Yeah, I uh, thought I would drop in and wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I also should wish to say that I think you are doing very well. You have begun to write. What makes you say that? I read the poem you have written in the Times. Oh, but that was written two months ago. But I was afraid I read it only last week. You remember once I told you when you would write to please yourself, you would write something good. This was good. It was written after my sister died. Oh, I didn't know. I should have guessed. <laughs> when I read your poem, I felt there had been pain in your heart. I felt I must come to you. And since you had business in Concord... I had no business in Concord. <laughs> no, not even on Christmas Day. No, I came only because... What? You remember once what I wrote you. I may be a little late, but I will surely come. You do remember. Oh, yes, always. Joe. Oh, please. I never once thought. You see, I have nothing to offer you. I'm older than you are. Does that matter? I need you. I've been lonely without you. I love you. I would have come long ago. But I thought there was this boy. Laurie, you didn't seriously think I was in love with him, did you? Were you not? <laughs> What has happened to him? He married my sister. Oh, stay with me. I want you to help me run my school. Your school, Joe? Yes, I've started a school. I need you so very much. Joe. Welcome home, Professor. You will stay. With you. I will always stay. Listen, everybody. Come here. Yes. I want you all to come here. What is it here? May I present my fiancé, Professor Bayer. I would not oh, wish God. to interrupt. Oh, nonsense. You must stay and have Christmas Eve dinner with Of course you go. Yes. We must have a toast at once. Yes. Hannah, bring the cup. Professor, you and Joe have added the star to the top of our Christmas tree. Something was missing. We had an empty chair. It isn't empty anymore. 
There's been something else missing this Christmas Day, too. Oh, Pop! Here you are, now. Remember? Oh, thank you. 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 Oh, thank you.